Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Welcome everyone to Satsang. Hello, Arna. Um, it's just a question arising. Um, as you spoke a lot about yourself in self-inquiry when your body was going through a painful process and weakness. Because um, I noticed myself that when the attention is very much fixed on what is going on with the body or any kind of um, mental dysfunctioning or disease that this alertness, it seems to be fogged as if, if there's like a kind of a fog up, up around it and that this seeing, it seems that there's aware, awareness about it, but it seems that the seeing is not as pristine, clear as in a healthy state. Um, but then it, it just, it's just coming in waves. So um, I just felt to ask how this self-inquiry, how the power and attention can be just be turned on again and again, even in moments of strong um, pain or weakness, um, so that it can be disregarded, whatever is happening on the body level, just to, to stay here and not to identify with anything happening on that, on that level, mm -hmm. if you can. Guide. Well, of course, you gave the answer yourself. Because even though that cloudy or unclear state is there and some pain is there in the body some discomfort is there in the body you said that you noticed that that this lack of clarity is there so in some way it's good to remember that you are engaged in the inquiry even when you notice unpleasant states there's a tendency amongst the docs to think that the inquiry is really only working when they can use it to access pleasant states or neutral states and this is particularly true when you're ill because you you don't necessarily expect a pleasant state to come out of using the inquiry doing your spiritual practices or whatever not really expecting that it will immediately turn everything pleasant again even though the body is suffering but there's very much an expectation that at the very least your experience will become neutral so that you can step away from the pain or the discomfort or whatever is rising and seeming to trouble you. But this is not really the focus of inquiry to make your life more pleasant or more neutral. The focus of inquiry is really to begin to notice that whatever the content on the screen of knowing, you are aware. The reason that this is significant 
is that over time it makes it possible for you to notice all sorts of experiences in body, mind, or world, pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral, without reacting to them or without reacting strongly to them. The benefit of this is that it's in the reactions that we have in body-mind that we can see the way in which this cloudiness that you're talking about, this veiling, slips into place either unnoticed, but over time begin, we begin to see that it slips into place and we can notice that it's happening. But we also begin to realize that noticing that it's happening offers us some relief from this sense that something is wrong or some problem needs to be solved. Because experience, mind, body, and world, is just what it is. And what the inquiry does for us, provides for us, is the opportunity to rest in that prior state of awareness and to realize that to notice pain, discomfort, sickness, unpleasantness of some sort is not a barrier to the recognition that beyond all of this, I am that. I am that self, this awareness which is here. So I would encourage you that when you notice, oh yes, this is this lack of clarity is here, or this unpleasantness is here, or this sickness is here, or the pain is here in your hand in the case of the surgery, that you notice that through all of this, there is a place in which you are abiding, which is quiet and is aware of this difficulty, aware of the unpleasantness of it, and yet remains aware of itself, even with unpleasantness present. This recognition that even with this present, in the body, in the mind, or the world, I am aware, and I know I am aware this is the path of inquiry. This is the declaration of inquiry, you can say. So when we first begin to train ourselves, we ask the question, who am I? What is aware here? What am I? These different forms of the inquiry, we ask the question. But as we mature in the practice of inquiry, and as we gain a firm foundation, it becomes more like this. Ah, yes, I see. Even with this challenging mind state, this challenging physical state, this challenging, I recognize that even in this, I am aware that awareness is here. And I am aware that I am aware. And this begins to really solidify the foundation of inquiry. Gives us a firm foundation on which to build this recognition that the self is always here as being consciousness in the midst of all experiences, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral, past, present, and future. In all of this, there is a firmness and that firmness rests as awareness itself.
and slowly, hopefully, what happens for you over time is you begin to recognize that each moment of that recognition, that which is aware is here now, I am aware, even with this object here, that you begin to recognize that there's a joy in that. Mm -hmm. There's a freedom that begins to be felt so that we're not trying to suppress what's happening in the body, mind, or world. We're simply trying to be present with it, in it, as it, and recognize that all of this experience in body, mind, and world is not other than consciousness itself. It is a, the same material that I am. So then all the underlying concern, problem solving, trauma, drama begins to fade away because there's a recognition that what is here now is here in order to show that I am that which is aware. It's important for each of you to understand and to recognize that you are much stronger than you think you are. Because one of the things that comes along with sickness, with illness, um, with challenging mind states, is the notion that I cannot handle this or I cannot do this or or I'm I'm somehow I'm I'm pulled back into uh, this resistance to being. <clears throat> but I would really encourage you to begin to see that as time goes on and you continue your inquiry, you begin to realize that you are stronger than you thought you were. That you can be with things that you thought you couldn't be with before. That feelings can come, that pain can come in the body, that illness can come in the body. And you can surrender whatever position or point of view you might have had in the past about what that meant. You can surrender it into the recognition that whatever is here is acting as a bell to remind you, I am aware. And it might be unpleasant. It might be the awareness that uh, my body hurts or, you know, in my case, that I had lost mobility and lost speech for a long period of time. But that doesn't change the fact that that which is aware is here through everything. And the more you're able to see this, and the more you're able to hold yourself in the position of recognition, the more the open heart flowers. The more compassion you have for yourself, the more compassion you have for others, the less judgmental you are. And so yes, these waves are still there, they're still going on, but now you are able to just ride on the surface of them without needing to dive deeply into them, judge yourself, judge another, judge the body, judge the situation. You are simply able to be here as loving awareness with whatever else is here at this moment. And that what is here in awareness as, a, as an object, that doesn't define who you are. Objects are just objects. You all now have enough experience to know that everything that comes lasts for a period of time, short or long, but then it goes. Everyone knows this from our own experience, even without being a long, long time practitioner. We all know that the things we were experiencing last year, five years ago, 10 years ago, we are not experiencing them now. We made some sort of resolution with them, we moved on, we don't think about it anymore. So whatever is here now is also the same way. The, way, the reason we know this is because we are able to see whatever the objects are around objects, there is this experience that happens 
of the unreality of objects, not because they aren't being experienced, but because they have no lasting quality. The lasting quality that we experience in our moment-to-moment -moment existence is in awareness itself, isn't it? Throughout every experience, positive, negative, neutral, past, present, or future, the one thing which is always here is awareness. That which is aware of what the objects are. This is the only reality. The objects themselves are ephemeral. They're coming, we don't know why. They're going, we don't know why. <laughs> and if we don't get caught up in that dance of I have to do something to make this go away, to change this, to change my mind about it. If we don't get caught up in that conversation, we simply are the witness watching, surrendering, everything passes. And what remains is that which is aware of whatever is passing. When I say you are the self, what I'm saying to you is you are the space in which all of this is being held. You are the space in which this, this belief or experience I am the body is being held. You are the space in which the recognition of the mind and its activity, its pleasantness, its unpleasantness, its uh, tendency to uh, stir things up when it's bored. All of this is rising in the awareness itself. This is what I mean when I say you are the self. You are the space in which everything is rising and falling. Coming to know this about yourself doesn't mean you won't experience any unpleasantness or you won't experience illness or the body won't die. It means that you won't be disturbed by it. That you will go through what you need to go through, understanding that somehow whatever is here now is here to help you awaken to the truth of your own being as being consciousness and bliss. And as difficult as it may be, it is not different from you, separate from you, outside of you. Whatever is here, is here to show you that you are the space in which all of this is arising. I've had several conversations this past week, which eventually came down to the devotee saying, what does this say about me that I am whatever, sick, uh, struggling, um, you know, I feel like I'm not able to remain present and clear. What does this say about me? I really want to make this clear. This doesn't say anything about you. 
nothing whatsoever. You are not that which is coming and going. Don't identify with what is coming and going, even when it is coming and going for a long period of time. You are the space in which all of this is rising. You can see in that space, sometimes there are pleasant things arising, but they don't last. Therein lies their unpleasantness. <laughs> because that which is pleasant, we want to cling to. We try to keep it, we want it to last. But because we know it won't, we experience unpleasantness. Even before the pleasant part of the experience has ended, you can see this in your own mind. There is an anticipation that this pleasantness cannot last. This is based in experience. Isn't it? Yes, it's based in experience. So a fright comes, oh no, this is very pleasant, but I won't get too attached because I know this won't last. So this can be the kind of a conversation that starts to go on consciously or unconsciously. But as soon as we begin to realize that we are that space in which there is nothing but awareness itself, which is not tied to the body, which is not tied to the thoughts, which is not tied to the world, the world experience. That which is before all of these objects, as soon as this begins to become firm, to mature in us, then we have the opportunity to really experience ourselves as being consciousness, as space, which is able, willing to hold all of this So when you're in the middle of an experience like Atma's describing, where she's been sick and she's also had some surgery and so on, when you're in the midst of this kind of experience, understand, remind yourself persistently that you are the self, that you are the awareness in which this difficulty is rising, staying for a period of time and will fall from. You are that space itself. You are being consciousness. The foundation in which all of this is known. So now your practice goes from asking yourself, who am I? To realizing I am this space. I am the self. And all of this is rising within myself. You may need to work with patience a little bit. When unpleasant <laughs> circumstances arise for any of us, it, it's a, only natural <laughs> from a conditioned point of view that we want it to be over with as quickly as possible. But it's a humbling experience, isn't it? To realize that we don't have control over the circumstances of our own life. Then we come up against the question, whose life is it anyway? Is it my life, very personally? Or is it life itself, which is happening here? And we must somehow find a way to surrender to and respect the wishes of the Supreme in this moment.
And in doing so, we open the space of our own heart, the space of our own being. And we say to life, here is more space. So yes, this unpleasantness is here, but there is more space here. So fill this space also. I am willing. I will receive whatever you offer me. So at that moment, when the mind and the heart wants to shut down, to withdraw into limitation, in order to escape, open, create more space, if you feel like you must do something, create more space and then see what life puts in that space for you. I know for myself, Atma, and this may be something that you can work with over the next few days, that I came to really love the space of my own life during that period of time where I was very ill. Responsibilities are diminished. You're home alone a lot. <laughs> you know, basic necessities are there and taken care of. There's a roof, there's food, things are happening that way. But aside from all of that, from needing to fix a meal or whatever. There was just a vast space that began to open up. It's in this space that we come to realize that we are so much more than this body, this mind, these circumstances. If we never have space, we don't realize this. This is why in all the contemplative traditions, even though we may not be able to meditate for hours every day, we're always encouraged, take a half an hour in the morning, take 20 minutes in the morning, take 20 minutes before you go to sleep at night and open your heart, move into the space of your silence. Realize that there is a nature for you, which is beyond body, mind, and world. All the contemplative traditions point toward giving yourself this time to recognize yourself as the silence of your own being. Just for a few minutes each day. As you, when you take this up as a regular way of being in the world, part of your everyday experience, what starts to happen is the world, life itself, begins to, in, life itself begins to create a falling away of the world so that more and more there is space for you to be in the silence of your own being. Sometimes the way it does this is through illness. <laughs> it just does. So you have been given a time out by life. So begin to realize that you've been given a blessing, not a problem to solve. The world has given you permission to say to family, friends, bosses, businesses, I am on a time out now. <laughs> I will talk with you next week. And you can move into this contemplative recognition that you love the silence, that you love not being quite so busy all the time, and that sometimes the body renders this great service of stopping you in your tracks, of stopping you from getting the next project going or being involved in the next activity.
when you become aware how much you love the silence of your own being and you're willing to turn off the TV, turn off the, the screens, turn off the music even, and you're willing to just be in the silence of your own being. When you come to recognize how much you love that, and I don't mean telling yourself you love it. I mean when you actually realize that you're perfectly okay with the world going away for periods of time, that you love the silence of your own being. When you have this recognition, silence, periods of time, of inactivity, they begin to come on their own. Where you, there doesn't need to be sickness in the body, there doesn't need to be disturbance, and you don't need to be fired from your job in order to take a break from it. All of this drama and trauma falls away and is replaced by a natural cycle of silence. And you begin to see it, that you have these periods of time where silence is coming and going in and out through, and your daily activity can go on, your business can go on, and yet somehow these spaces just seem to magically open up. An appointment gets canceled, something gets rescheduled, and suddenly you have an unexpected hour, day, or week. What do you do with it? Do you love that silence in that moment that you've been given? Or do you run around in a panic trying to fill it with all sorts of activity because you just don't know what to do with yourself if you have four days with no, with no appointments? Begin to recognize that one of the reasons you are here in this moment, in this satsang, is because you are a person who loves silence. You might be afraid of it until you get used to it but you love it. <laughs> so accepted about yourself. <laughs> and even though all of your friends and family are saying, Oh, I don't know how you can do that. I cannot stay home. I have to be busy. I have to see my friends. I have to go to dinner. I have to go to lunch. What am I going to do next Tuesday? What am I going to do next Thursday? What's it going to be like, you know, this time next month? You know, we all know these people. Maybe you're one of them who has a calendar that's already filled out all the way until the middle of June. <laughs> Sometimes this is necessary for those of you like Brandy who are in your master's program, you know, it's a busy time. We understand. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, those of you who just simply feel like you have to fill every moment of every day with some activity, some screen, some person. And you really struggle when, not, when life gives you two days unexpectedly all to yourself. But begin to notice this about yourself. And then you can begin to accept that this deep recognition of your love for silence is what is showing itself in that moment. It's not that your world is falling apart, it's that life is saying to you, respect your silence, enjoy it, move into it, discover who you are, and here's the time to do it. So then you can begin to notice the cycles, the ebbs and flows of your own life and embrace whatever is here now. When there is activity, there is activity. When there is nothing, there is nothing. That which is aware is holding it all. You are that.
Namaste. I'm very happy to be with you all again. Wish you all a good day for the rest of your day. May there be joy and peace in your heart. May you be a source of loving kindness and inspiration for all of those around you. May you come to know your nature as being consciousness and bliss. Hari Om Tat Sat. Trayambakam yajamahe Sugandhim bushti vardhinam Urvargami bambandhinam Mityor mukshiya mamritava Svaha bhuva bhu Om sat jyung hang Om